Pre-prosthetic procedures. As the name says, pre-prosthetic, anything that is before the procedures of prosthodontist is the pre-prosthetic procedures. So all those can be surgeries which is to be followed, initiated before the prosthodontic procedures. What are the aims of pre-prosthetic surgeries? As a prosthodontist, what we want? We want a ridge which is well formed. We want a U-shaped nicely ridge which can support our dentures. We want a ridge which can support the fixed partial denture which is coming over it. We, have, we want nice abutments. We want nice space in the vestibule. We do not want any frenum which is encroaching over the ridge. So these are the procedures that we have to think in mind before planning a pre-prosthetic surgeries. So that is when the question of pre-prosthetic surgery arises. So how are we classifying the pre-prosthetic surgeries? That will be classified as basic surgeries and advanced surgeries. The procedures can be alveolar ridge correction. It can be alveolar ridge extension. It can be alveolar ridge augmentation. Ridge correction. There can be any bony prominences anywhere. So those corrections will be called as alveolar ridge corrections. Any augmentation, the word itself suggests that augmenting means adding on anything. Extension, if somewhere it is less, we will add on it to make it more. So extending the ridge is again an alveolar ridge extension. We will see all these procedures in detail. Coming to alveolar ridge corrections. Alveolar ridge corrections, what are the things that can happen in that? It can be further classified into bony surgeries and soft tissue surgeries. Bony surgeries, what are the different bony surgeries that we can go ahead with? Alveolectomy, we can go to primary alveoloplasty, we can do a secondary alveoloplasty, we can do tori removal, we can do genial tubercle removal, the mental foramen, we can reposition it. All these are the bony surgeries that can happen. What are the soft tissue surgeries that can happen? The soft tissue surgeries are related to the vestibuloplasty or phrenectomy. So the frenum is encroaching. We need to reduce the size of the frenum and put it back down somewhere high in the wallet. So uh, those are the soft tissue surgeries that can be planned accordingly. Coming to alveolectomy. So alveolectomy is what we do during the extraction. After the extraction, we raise the flap as we can see here and then we are able to see the cortical bone which is present. So any bony prominence is present with the help of a bone file. In the second picture, we can see that is again removed. So this procedure is called alveolectomy. Coming to alveoloplasty. Now alveoloplasty can be further classified into two types, a primary alveoloplasty or a secondary alveoloplasty. Primary alveoloplasty is done during extraction. After the extraction, immediately what we do, we take the rongeo, we press out the socket, we recontour the socket to the original size because while procedure of extraction, at times the buccal side is elaborated or it is on the lingual side, whichever side is elaborated, we need to recontour it back to the original position. So that time, whatever procedure is done, that is alveoloplasty, that is called primary alveoloplasty. Even with a bone file, we need to take out if there are any sharp specules left over. Secondary alveoloplasty is done while in case of denture fabrication, while we are doing, we saw a sharp edge coming out. We need to raise the flap completely. And then in the tote, with the help of a ronger, with the help of a bone file, we need to plane out that particular alveolar bone. Simple conservative alveoloplasty with multiple extraction. This is what we said with the help of bone file. We can see the sharp spicules of the leftover alveolar crest is removed post extraction. The unfavorable undercuts which are present. Undercut is good for a denture retention, but unfavorable undercuts, like if the mile below this mylohyoid ridge, if there is a deep beneath inside, so the placement and removal of the denture will be a problem. So, what we have to do, we have to get rid of that unfavorable undercuts. So, that is again done in the case of genial tubercles. Genial tubercles at times it is very highly placed. Since highly placed the down space which is beneath the genial tubercle is too much. So once it is too much while removing of the denture and seating of the denture there is a head knot of pain to the patient. To get rid of that particular pain we need to re reduce the genial tubercles. Same is the case of mylohyoid ridge. 
we know the lower denture base is very unstable it is difficult to get retention we need to get retention maximum from our lateral throat form alveolingual sulcus but what if the mylohyoid ridge is very prominent so the denture seating because our denture is made up of acrylic so denture seating and removal of the denture all the time will cause every pain every time a pain to that particular region it may get bruised and it may further lead to any other complications so we need to get rid of the mylohyoid ridge if it is prominent excision of tori as we had seen the classification of tori was large moderate or small so in that case if there is a small tori it's fine we can relieve the denture in particular area and proceed what if the tori is covering the entire palate we need to get relieved of the tori so we need to send it to the oral surgeons get it relieved and then proceed further for the denture making coming to palatal toral excision most common tori is present in the lower premolars and then it is present in the tori of the palate so excision in what are the indications for excision of tori similarly the same if it is large in size which is hindering our denture base to be stabilizing because maximum support we get it from heart palate there is a primary stress bearing area so if that is having a tori that you have to relief it once we are relieving we are breaking off the seal the atmospheric pressure that is created by the heart palate with that of the denture so in those cases we need to excise the tori coming to maxillary tuberosity reduction again another important aspect is maxillary tuberosity maxillary tuberosity is present after the third molar second third molar area posterior it is present now that maxillary tuberosity is important because that is a limiting structure it will our denture will limit over there but what if that particular maxillary tuberosity is bigger in size so again in a posterior region something bigger the denture will get heavier and it will lose its tight contact with the posterior palatal seal area so again we need to excise not excise exactly but we need to recontour the maxillary tuberosity or reduce the size of maxillary tuberosity coming to the soft tissue surgeries what are the soft tissue surgeries that we can go to the soft tissue surgeries can be reductant crustal soft tissue which is present why do we get a flabby tissue or why do we get a reductant tissue in our body we all know that our body has a basic mechanism of not accepting any foreign objects so why what happens is once our residual ridge starts resorbing our body has its own mechanism to protect itself from any upcoming sources so resorption of the bone is taking place what body does body increases the mass of the mucosa so that is how the soft tissue in that particular area increases and those soft tissues will be the reductant soft tissues or the flabby tissues while making of denture this is harmful we cannot afford to have a denture on a movable tissue so again we need to get remove rid of it so that time soft tissue surgeries are indicated if there is any pulus fistulatum we need to if the frenum level is high again how much frenum relief can you do not till the crest of the ridge because we will lose our seal over there so that seal is not to be broken so rather we can recontour reposition the frenum down in case of mandible and up in case of maxillary arches so removal of redundant so uh, crestal soft tissue we can see how it is removed the crestal soft tissues are first a flap is raised the soft tissue is removed with the help of a scalpel blade number 11 or 13 and then we suture it back and on to the bone coming to phrenectomy we already discussed the indications which are indicated when we are supposed to go for phrenectomy also at times a lingual frenum or if, uh, it's also known as a tongue tie cases we need to reduce the frenum not only on to the crest but also sometimes if that frenum is attached to the tip of the tongue what happens when the patient wants to remove his tongue out the denture is going to lose its stability so again we need to reduce that particular frenum so we can see there are different techniques there is a diamond technique window technique of removal all those are detailed in the oral surgery classes 
most advanced 810 nanometer diode lasers are used nowadays for removal and recontouring of the you know uh, frena but the good part is that it is bleeding less it doesn't have any bleeding it doesn't cause any pain sensations and also the post operative healing is faster in cases of lasers Coming to rich extension procedure, a old patient coming to our clinic is most difficult thing that we encounter is the height of the ridge, the size of the ridge and that is where our attention is going to come from. So how will we extend it? If it is a very flat ridge, you have no option because you do not have option left for a complete denture, you do not have option left for even placement of implant. So you need to extend your ridge. Extending ridge can be with the soft tissue part also. How is that? Vestibule, if we increase the size of the vestibule, we will get enough ridge height again. So vestibuloplasty is also one of the procedure to extend the height of the ridge. Where all it can happen? It can happen on the labial side. It can also happen on the lingual side. Coming to the next part. Labial vestibular procedures are differently classified as Kazanian's procedure. Godwin's procedure, Clark's procedure, we have Obviger's method. Most commonly used is Obviger's modification method that we use daily, uh, day to day time. And this will be all uh, other techniques are obsoleted. So, the next is the labial vestibular procedures. What are those? We have different vestibular procedures, the vestibuloplasty to perform vestibuloplasty. Kazanian gave a procedure. Godwin did a modification to Kazanian's procedure, then Clark's technique, Obvigus modification, all this will come across oral surgery lectures. Obvigus modification was the uh, vestibuloplasty procedure where both the sides, the buccal as well as the lingual, both the flaps were raised. It was recontoured down or up respectively for mandible and maxilla and then sutured back. Coming to lingual vestibuloplasty, especially lingual vestibuloplasty was given by Cardwell which we are using day by day today. Cardwell's technique, there was an older technique of Cronus technique as well. What we do in this is floor of the mouth which is extension, we increase the level of floor of the mouth. So what happens when in cases of lateral throat form, when it was of class 3 type and it is very highly placed, you need to get it little down. If it is too highly placed and there is no place for placement of the denture. So those were the techniques. Coming to ridge augmentation procedure. Augmenting is adding on. How all we can add anything? So we can add mandibular augmentation can be done. What are things that we can add? We can add it in superior border. We can add an in inferior border. We can add it in between that is called the sandwich technique or interpositional technique. We can do visor osteotomy very interesting technique that is we can have only grafting as well. Superior border augmentation. Let us come to one by one. Superior border augmentation. So the next is ridge augmentation procedure for maxillary arch. We have only bone grafting by autogenous or allogenous grafts. We have only grafting of alloplastic material. We have interpositional sandwich grafts. We have sinus lift procedure which is further classified into direct and indirect sinus lift procedures. Now there are different terms which came till now before proceeding further uh, here we will see some materials that are used and the different terms which came autogenous, allogenous, allograft, what were all those things. Autogenous bone graft, autogenous, genesis is human. So auto, my own graft used for my own self like my iliac graft, crest graft, a rib graft or symphysis graft, this area. These are the autogenous grafts that we can use. What are allogenic? Allo is somebody else. So allogenic, human of any other's human. From where do we get? Cadaver. So freeze-dried cadaver bone grafts are used as a allogenic bone grafts. Alloplastic, those materials which are not from human being, like hydroxyapatite crystals, those are alloplastic materials that are added. We have metal mesh. Now metal mesh can be done by two ways. Either metal mesh with an allogenous graft it can be done or it can be with the hydroxide that is alloplastic materials as well. So what will metal mesh do? Metal mesh will give more strength, more retention to the graft that we are placing when the ridge height is very less. Coming to the mandible augmentation, the superior bone grafting or the augmentation, what we do in that. If we are going ahead with the allogenous graft, 
allogenous from somewhere else that is a freeze dried bone graft from the cadavers in those cases we cut the bone graft from a u shape similarly if you are doing an autogenous from my own iliac crest or symphysis symphysis the entire region is not possible to simulate for symphysis there has to be a minimal requirement or minimal space for an entire ridge to augment we need from iliac crest or rib grafts that has to be cut in a u shape in a horseshoe shape pattern and then tried upon the particular ridge if i am doing in the inferior border the same procedure that was given by marx and saunders in the year of 86 which was modified further by quinn in the year of 1991 recently he said that do a vestibuloplasty before and then go ahead with an inferior border grafting coming to interpositional bone graft or which is also known as sandwich technique a very interesting technique as well here what happens is the crest of the ridge is very sharp and we have bone in the lower region so what we do we give an osteotomy cut we place a bone graft between the superior and the inferior border and then again close it back so those kind of position positional grafts between the ridges is called interpositional bone grafts or also known as a sandwich grafting why sandwich grafting because we are it is like a sandwich that we are putting a graft in between the two bones visor osteotomy big term big into question big into research very easy and simple to understand maybe just think that in my hand the front portion is the buccal region the posterior portion towards me is the lingual region what we do in visor osteotomy is buccal and lingual we give a vertical or slit a osteotomy cut a slit we give vertically so what is happening our buccal is parted our lingual is parted we raise the lingual border we raise the lingual bone itself to a level of high so now my lingual bone is somewhere here and buccal bone is over here so this difference of lingual to buccal is filled up with a graft so we have a graft in a l shape from buccal towards lingual because we have increased we have just taken out the lingual on higher position than the buccal and we are filling a graft in this particular position this is a simple procedure which is known as visor osteotomy procedure so what are the advantages of visor osteotomy the advantage of visor osteotomy is once we are doing something like this then 80% of the time the bone graft is maintained in its position and it does not move so that is a very big advantage for us to place an implant to place a denture whatever so whatsoever matters but this keeps our bone 80% healthy and intact in that position for longer duration of time has to be with some disadvantages the disadvantage is patient needs to be hospitalized for that the morbidity of the patient has to be checked then there has to be a surgical procedure which will go ahead there has to be some period of hospitalization so all these are there along with that one basic complication that can happen that might happen is a nerve paresthesia while we are doing this why nerve paresthesia because what happens is when we are doing a while when we are giving a vertical slit or a vertical osteotomy cut there might be the alveol alveolar inferior alveolar nerve which is there beneath if it is not checked with the help of cbct before and well planned we might get nearer to the nerve with the scalpel or the osteotomy blades and we can hurt the nerve so paresthesia can occur because of that there is a modified technique of visor osteotomy which has come over again in modified visor osteotomy what you do is along that is done special in the posterior region first of all indicated only in the posteriors and those cases along with the vertical osteotomy cut you also give a horizontal osteotomy cut so you are limiting yourself to one particular section so you are not going beyond that so this is a new thing which has come over and in that we have also noted studies have noted that the nerve paresthesia problem is also decreased down because that time we have less amount of area to do surgery with we have a controlled place where we can work with so that has some over advantages the visor osteotomy Thank you.